Hello everyone, welcome to the morning medical school report for the week of August 10th to the 16th. <laughs> I'm the Kitchen Witch. I'm Lysander Santos. Welcome. <laughs> welcome everybody, we're doing something new this week. Um, We've been having a lot of success with our Sunday morning stream, our, our Sunday coffee stream, and we decided to try doing MMR a little differently this week, just a little. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sit, we're gonna have a cup of coffee, we're gonna talk about all the things happening in the universe this coming week to get you ready for the week ahead. Good morning, Sylvia. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, depending on how this goes this morning, we we are thinking about just changing it up. So this is going to be a lot more interactive than it used to be. So we're inviting people to please comment, please join the conversation uh, as we we talk about the week ahead and we do the week ahead things. Gotcha. Because <laughs> the kitchen witch makes sense when she hasn't had enough coffee. That's that's what we just learned. <laughs> Okay, so where would we like to begin? Well, let's, I guess let's begin with uh, a cup of coffee. Mm? So you, if you like coffee and you don't have a cup of coffee, you should consider getting one and having a little sit. You should absolutely consider having a cup of coffee. So we're going to start our day with a coffee blessing. How does that sound? Great. For those of you that are not familiar with The Kitchen Witch, this is the sort of stuff I do. I help add a little magic to your everyday life. So we're going to do an enchantment over our cup of coffee to help us get the most out of our day. So you're going to start by drawing a pentacle over the top of the glass and encircling it. And placing it under the palm of your hand, taking a deep breath in and out. We're going to bring ourselves to the present, to this moment, and to a state of calm, clear-mindedness. Now we're going to state our intention. Coffee is great for things like promoting, you know, a good work ethic, getting things done. It's great for bringing in abundance in your life. So we're going to go with those things today. So we're going to say, with this morning cup of coffee, I invite abundance into my life. I know with every sip, my good fortune grows. And with every step I take, I know there'll be a little bit more spring, a little bit more stride. I'm going to get everything done today in my own time, but in the best time. Everything is finished now. Everything is ready. I'm going to have an excellent day. It is an excellent day. And so it is. Mm. Then you drink that in. Oh, yeah. All right. So it's frequently necessary to have coffee on the go. It's a lot more enjoyable when you can stop and yes. take a moment to take it in. Absolutely. Good morning, Sherry. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Sylvia's at work. I will, you know what? This next sip is dedicated to you right here. This one's for Sylvia. Mm. Sylvia's going to have a blessed day. I'm sending those coffee vibes to her right now. Mm -mm -mm. So we're trying a new brew today, by the way. For anyone oh, yeah. who cares, uh, this is House Blend by Starbucks. <laughs> now it's the coffee, or the breakfast, sorry. Oh, breakfast blend. We haven't gotten breakfast blend, the Starbucks breakfast blend before. It was a blend. Breakfast blend with orange and brown sugar in it. Yeah, I'm enjoying that. Good morning, Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so again, welcome to the new meta morning metaphysical report. Um, all righty, well, I say we should get into it. We should talk a little bit about uh, what's happening this week. My, my little astrology master. Tell us how horrible it's all gonna be. Have you ever noticed, for those of you that watch the morning report every week, have you ever noticed that Lysander tries so hard to make all the horrible things the planets are doing to us sound like they're not so bad? It's all pretty bad. I don't know about you guys, but I have been emotionally in the existential dread for several weeks now. 
Well, it's pretty easy to interpret it all negatively. <laughs> but all with all astrological events, there's always <laughs> potential. It's all meant to be for the highest and best good. It's all very alchemical at this time. Um, there's a lot of potential to enact deep change and healing, mm -hmm. and uh, frequently healing is not pleasant. I know. <laughs> so the uh. last, I mean this whole year really, but especially the last few weeks, months have been particularly emotional. There's been a lot going on in kind of forcing us to shed, to change, to let things go. Oh yeah. Um, and so this week, August 10th to 16th in particular, we have the Sun and Mercury are both in Leo. So what does that mean? Um, so the, um, that means the Sun brings sort of illumination and clarity to ourselves, who we are, what's important to us. It's also bringing illumination to our minds, what's happening inside of us, consciously, subconsciously, mm -hmm. and encouraging that expression itself. But anyway, uh, these two planets are aspecting a few others, so they are either squaring or quintuxing uh, Uranus, uh, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto which uh, at various points of the week are all in retrograde. Okay, hold so. on, hold on. So what I'm really hearing here is that there's a lot of things happening that are going to make us reflect on ourselves, but what we should really be re reflecting on is the fact that there are how many planets in retrograde? Hold up. How many planets are in retrograde? Well, at the start of the week it's four, but it becomes five. When Uranus goes into retrograde in Taurus on the 15th. <laughs> um, so I'll get to that in a moment. So the Sun and Mercury are in Leo and they have kind of tense aspects with these other four planets at various points during the week. So that really, this is all really encouraging conscious reflection on what it is we need to do to create change in ourselves, in our lives, and affect deep change. And okay. maybe intensely uncomfortable. And highlighting weaknesses within ourselves to be resolved and to not be too proud to do so. Okay. So, you're saying that, you're, I love you to death, but you're saying this in a way that even I'm confused. So, okay, the sun in Leo makes us reflect on ourselves, but we're feeling a little too proud to maybe want to accept the changes that are being encouraged. That is possible. Um, so, talk about it. Stop, stop being smart about it. Talk about it. So, it's... Uh, I mean that's a, essentially what's happening. The the square the sun squares uh, these other planets, so that brings like a like kind of this awkward, tense energy. So that's why reflecting on this, it's like it might be very difficult to create changes. Okay, so the planets are making it harder for us to create changes, but it's really like pushing us to change. Sometimes that discomfort allows us to see things we wouldn't if they were like being nice and encouraging us to reflect in a more gentle way. So even though, but when it's difficult, it also makes it easy for us to want to resist. So it's kind of an interesting thing that happens and that has been happening. Um, we're being pushed into situations that we either don't want to be in or look at things we don't want to look at. And so because of that discomfort, we can really shy away from it and resist it, but sometimes that's the only way to really see clearly what's happening. Okay. Is there any point in the week where it's going to be maybe a little more pronounced than not? I mean, you did mention that some of these planets were going into retrograde. Are, are any of those going to have a significant effect on, you know, how we handle life, <laughs> as it were? Well, uh, some part notable days this week are... are are Thursday, 
uh, when Mars and Pluto are squared. So again, this like tense uh, energy where Pluto is really the planet, most of all, shoving us into this self-confrontation and shifting and letting things go, whether we want to or not. And with Mars, it really adds that aggressive push into that. Okay. Um, and then on Saturday, Uranus goes, is the day that Uranus goes into retrograde. And all retrogrades are periods of reviewing, reconsideration, reflecting. Um, and so this may bring an energy of like sudden changes, sudden shifts in situations. And, and really it's about shaking up the ruts in our lives. It may kind of force our hand a bit to either commit to a path or to change course. Okay. And that could be your life in general or specific situations. Okay. That sounds awesome, doesn't it, guys? <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> so the planets are moving against us. That That's what I heard. I heard that you're going to be really introspective, but you're not going to want to be introspective. But the universe is going to aggressively be like, no, change your life. So if you're that girl and you're not sure if you're ready to get rid of your boyfriend, Universe is done with his bullshit. You need to just move him along. Um, and then and then things are just going to go into retrograde, which means we're just going to be stuck in our heads going, oh, God, oh, God, why did I make these choices? Great. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> but the thing to remember is that if we didn't have those periods of time to consider all of those silly choices, then I suppose we wouldn't uh, have the forethought to make changes to our life that would better us. So uh, this weekend it can get really easy to get lost in arguments, fights, the details of things are like a, a cause, like a personal cause so to speak. And so I'd like to remind you all to kind of focus on the big picture of your own life so to speak. Kind of not just keep in mind what's happening in front of you but you know your future, your situation as a whole and of course focus on you and what's going on in you because this leo season is all about coming into your own a little more so that is the astrology for the week well awesome thanks for that <laughs> now everything's moving everything's in the highest and greatest good everybody just remember that the planets might be pushing you this way and that way but it's all for the best uh so we're gonna say hello to mark joining us from the UK. That is awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, what do you want to do next? Do you want to look at ducks? Sure. Let's look at ducks. Let's look at ducks. So earlier this week, we were out for a walk. We were headed to the grocery store. We have a creek that uh, goes through. Is that like the thing on this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> There's a, a creek right there next to our grocery store, and we got to see some ducks. Look at the ducks! They are so cute. It's duck season. That's where we are. <laughs> yeah, it only happens during the uh, the summer. During winter, the creek is dried out. Yeah, the creek is dried out during winter. Oh, my mom That's good. Um, yeah, so because the creek is dried out during the winter for the most part, or it's just frozen solid, we don't actually get to see a lot of ducks in our area, so we got to enjoy the ducks. So we thought we would combine ducks with affirmation of the week. That's right. Our joyfulness thought this week focuses on taking a minute to appreciate the world around you. We have a really hard time, especially with all the chaos happening in our world right now. Gratitude is the greatest defense against negativity. Taking a moment to appreciate life is the greatest way to defend yourself against all the negativity out there right now. There is so much negativity in our world. So I've got a couple of highlights there just to remind you all to appreciate the little things. It was it would have been so easy for the two of us to just walk right past these adorable little ducks on the creek while we were headed to the grocery store with our masks on and our backpacks on because we walk to and from everywhere and it was just such an amazing thing to just stop and see these ducks because life is beautiful so we're going to do the affirmation of the week i'm going to read it out loud for everybody i am a spirit having a human experience 
and I am here to get closer to love. Isn't that nice? Okay. It's a nice affirmation. I'm going to say it again, because I can. I am a spirit having a human experience, and I am here to get closer to love. Just take a minute to say that to yourself, and look at the ducks. Isn't that nice? Just take a minute to be grateful for life. It is so, so easy to get overwhelmed right now. I mean, doesn't matter what website you're on or what thing you're doing, it's, you know, the trauma in our world is in your face. So we're gonna take a minute to pretend none of that's happening. Say, oh my God, life is abundant and it's everywhere. Look at these ducks. Look at, look at me, I'm alive. This is fantastic. I had coffee this morning. Who doesn't love that? There are still great things happening in your life, I promise. I promise they're there if you just take a minute to look for them. So there it is. There is your joyfulness thought for the week. Ducks and gratitude. Ducks and gratitude. Beautiful. I threatened my, my partner earlier today. I said, I'm going to quack when I do the duck segment. And she was like, all right. <laughs> do you feel the necessity? I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. I resisted the urge. <laughs> Quacking is awesome, though. All right. Well, so that was our affirmation for the week. That's the affirmation for the week. And, and your joyfulness thought for the week. Be grateful that you're alive. Look for all the things to be grateful for. Find nature. Look outside your window. If there is a tree, that is amazing. Trees are amazing. <laughs> I can't even, <laughs> having lived in, in the desert in California most of my life, or in like downtown LA where it's nothing but buildings, and then moving out to the country and being like, oh my God, there are trees outside. It's very green. I mean, we've been living here for 10 months almost. Mm -hmm. And I still look out my window every day and go, oh my god, that's a tree. I it's know. a tree. And there are so many apple trees in our neighborhood. There are so many, lovely. there are so many trees. So many flowers. Trees. <laughs> I'm sure for most people, they're like, um, yeah, trees are outside. But I'm just like, you don't understand. In some places, there are no trees. And you can tell because you can't breathe. <laughs> there's no air because there's no trees. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. My tree rant aside. <laughs> yes, I know it's a tree rant. Okay. So, darling, uh, how about we do a little bit of a reading for this week? All right. Get, get some insight for our lovely viewers. So, uh, for this week, I'd like to use runes to do our reading. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share while you get started. So I'm going to go ahead and actually draw them for us right now. This is meant to give some guidance into the week ahead. The rune set I have is made of clay. Um, if you aren't already familiar with what they are, it's a divination tool from the Norse practice. Um, and uh, I have found it very useful. Uh, each symbol represents a force of nature, but it, they also have uh, guidance that's quite applicable to one's life. So I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to do that now. All right, so we have three for this week. 
and based on the type of energetic sensation I got, that this guidance for this week, this time, is more directed towards our sense of self and who we are, which is appropriate for the energy of this yes, period. Think, considering that that seems to be what's going on in the universe, absolutely. So let's take a look at what we got. Oh, that's, <laughs> I was going to say, that's, that's such a that wow. How interesting. But that's not part of the symbol. So we got, never tried saying the rune names aloud before, so excuse my pronunciation. Um, I have to actually look up the pages to get the name. So it might just take a people. moment. Oh, hold on. Can't show the people because I don't know what the camera's doing. Ha 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 ha. Here we go. Okay. So the first rune is I, I was. Um, there they are, they're ready. Wunjo. Um, what was the last one? Oh, I'm not sure how this one. Okay, go down. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Join and my friends. Hansu's. Alright, so uh, the booklet I use is the Book of Runes by Ralph Blum for anyone. He's curious. I do interpret them, but I found really, really like uh, the main meanings in this booklet. All right. So the first is I was with, and the key terms are defense and avertive powers. As we are tested, we fund the power to avert blockage and defeat. Uh, there appears to be blockage in your path, but even a delay may prove beneficial. Do not be overly eager to press forward. This is not a time or situation in which you can make your influence felt. Um, have patience. This rune speaks to difficulties that arise with the beginning of new life. Often it announces a time of waiting, uh, such as waiting for fruit to ripen. Mm -hmm. Um, the ability to foresee consequences before you act is called for here. Just kind of like skimming through. So that will allow you to take your time in coming to any decisions you need to do. And once the time comes, the doing will be effortless and the universe will support and empower your action. So this is really about... Um, if there's a blockage in your path, consider that it's for a reason. Uh, detours or obstacles are detours in the right direction. Absolutely. So you need to wait and allow things to unfold a little more to see why this block is in your path in whatever form it's taking in whatever situation. Interesting. Hope you're all listening. This is for you. So next is Wunjo. Oh. How oh, interesting. This one's talking about uh, waiting, like fruit needing to ripen, and this rune is a fruit-bearing branch. Mm. The term of travail is ended, and you have come to yourself in some regard. The shift that was due has occurred, and now you can freely receive its blessings, whether they be in material gain, in your emotional life, or in a heightened sense of your own well-being. So the good news is that we don't have to wait very long. Within the scope of this week, this uh, things will unfold enough. So it, this is between the 10th and the 16th. So wait, allow things to unfold. And the shift that needed to happen will occur. And that will uh, offer more understanding and manifestation. Joyousness accompanies this new energy, energy blocked before now. It's like light piercing the clouds. This is... There is a new clarity which may call for you to renounce existing or old plans, ambitions, and goals. It is timely and proper that you submit, for this is a rune of restoration of the self properly aligned to the self. You are coming more into the self. There's a blockage in your path for a reason. You need to wait, allow things to unfold, because for a lot of us, the things we're trying to pursue are not truly aligned to who we are, and this Leo 
of seas and energy and a lot of the planets are all about coming into the self and connecting here stripping away other people and situations that are taking away from that so this is really emphasizing you need to be willing to change your mind and see the error in your path essentially yeah. all right and the last is on seas which is signals so this is uh, a rune that focuses directly upon the mechanism of self change and transformation and the keynote here is receiving, receiving messages, signals, gifts. Even a timely warning may be seen as a gift. So whether it's good news, bad news, and good ships, ships that seem negative right now, take it as the gift it is. An opportunity to avert disaster mm. or to learn. This rune brings sacred knowledge. This signifies a new life unfolding. New lives begin with new connections, surprising linkages that direct us into new pathways. Take pains to be especially aware and conscious during meetings, visits, chance encounters, and particularly with persons wiser than yourself. This is a signal to explore the depths. depths. You are reminded that you must draw first from the well to nourish and give to yourself then there will be more than enough to nourish others. And that's also a huge theme I found right now. You need to focus your resources on yourself, not on others. So uh, go ahead and show them the, the book. Good morning, Anna. Thanks for joining us. Here is, oh, yet again, I cannot see exactly what my camera's doing. Give me one second. Here we go. Na -na -na. To be fair, I'm not sure. I've never tried looking up this book. I don't know how easy it'll be to find. I found it second hand. So um, hopefully you'll be able to find it all right. This is, in my opinion, the best book on runes I've read. Not that I've read many, mind you, maybe five tops. <laughs> um, I can honestly say, having worked at a, a metaphysical store and, you know, Part of my job was actually at least skimming through a very large percentage of books. Uh, this one's probably the best one I've ever found, and we didn't sell it. So it's also older. It's from like the 80s. So I was just yeah. really fortunate. Let's see. So The Book of Runes by Ralph Blum. If you can find it, that's great. Yeah, the copyright on it is 1982. So Ralph Blum. Yeah. I mean, it's a fantastical little book. Um, maybe we can type it in. I'll have to like sit on the bench. Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to have to go over there for that. <laughs> we we have not set up the computer this way before, so I apologize for... Can you put me in the comment screen? Boom! Screen. There we go. Oh. Wow. Oops. Good thing I'm used to typing without looking at the screen. That looks okay. Yep, looks good. Great. There it is, everybody. So if you can find it, more power to you. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. No, it's a, it's a great book. It is. So that is your reading for the week. I hope it has been useful to you. I love it. Um, on this show, I like to feature a few different forms of divination. So you'll we'll keep seeing the runes and the I Ching. Mm -hmm. and art alternatively yeah. and we'll see what you all like the most with time yeah this is like the sixth version of the morning report <laughs> that we've done so the morning report is always changing and growing and adapting and we're we're still trying to kind of find our our pace so i hope that everybody comments let us know what you think of the changes um Decided to go with something a little more casual this time around and see what uh, what the response is like for that. All right. So what else would you like to share well, that's everything. this week? Well, that's everything we had planned. That's everything we had planned. Um, if you have questions, ask. Um, Thank you, Andrew. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, Otherwise, we can just do a quick little like moment. Mm -hmm. Be peaceful. 
we can like clear the people. Oh, <laughs> sorry, my cat did a little hop because of my startled her. Baby, do you want to say hello to the people? No, you do. So we're going to take a moment and just listen to the tone of this and no. sort of take a moment to be here, be present, and be calm. It's a simple thing, but um, it's surprising how much we don't do that. We can get really caught up in stuff that's happening, our responsibilities, and just even our own mind. Hashtag more cats. Uh, the tone of this bowl does clear your energy <laughs> as well as invite you to become more conscious of yourself and to even glimpse into the subconscious. So if you did experience any images or intuitive impressions, um, take a moment to contemplate those. I do look forward to giving some crystal bowls at some point mm. um, and sharing those with all of you. And um, I think that brings us to a close for now. So we'll see you all again next week. I would like to take a moment to say that if you enjoy this and you would like to support the Morning Metaphysical Report as it continues to evolve and find its ideal manifestation, please visit patreon.com slash morning metaphysical report. Uh, the Patreon will also continue to evolve as we figure out the ideal rewards to give our members. But for now, it's just a way to support this progress and to add things. And as there is more support, we can add things like crystal bowls and more things mm -hmm. as are requested. And you're welcome to make requests in the comments now or uh, on that page. Yeah. We, um... Feels like this was a, a good thing. We've got some good feedback about it. So um, next week, join us on Sunday for the Morning Metaphysical Report. We're going to start doing it in this style for a while. Um, so if you join us on Sunday, uh, we're going to be doing several live streams, one right after the other. We'll be doing the Morning Metaphysical Report, Sunday Coffee, which is an open discussion with all of you. And uh, they will do a, a healing meditation or something nice. Great. So if you'd like uh, to, please check out the description of this video for links pertaining to the show, uh, including the Patreon link. And I would like to take a moment to thank our current patron, patrons for your support so far and for watching this grow. And also thank you to everyone who watches and all of you who share the video. Uh, we'll see you again next week. And be blessed. Bye, everybody. Have a beautiful week.